Hey guys, it's Carla. I'm here in the Bon Appetit test kitchen today to have a secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we're gonna put Chris's super taster capabilities to the test. This is Snoop Dogg's Lobster Thermidor. We're challenging Chris to recreate this exact dish with every ingredient in two days. He'll be allowed to taste it, smell it, touch it, but at no point in this process will he be allowed to look at this dish. At the end of the second day, I'll come back to taste his final creation, and I'll be the judge. Has it happened? It smelled like lobster. Aha. I feel like there's like a lot of parts and a lot of like spindly bits happening all over the place. I am feeling a crusher claw on a pretty big friggin' lobster. Ugh. Um, I don't know how to do this without making a total mess. I'm just separating the claws. I'm trying not to disturb everything that's happening. Here's a section of tail. So the lobster seems to have been split in half. There's no sauce on this plate. It seems like the meat has been removed and put back in the shell and then topped with some kind of bread crummy sitch. So I'm getting some garlic flavor in the breadcrumb there. Very creamy sauce. It tastes like there is a bechamel, which has been turned into a, a sauce mornay with the addition of parm. I'm not getting any heat or anything like real obvious. I feel like there's another flavor going on with those breadcrumbs. It's a very soft breadcrumb. It's not super hard and textural. I don't know if it's just kind of softening a little bit because of the steam action of the kind of moisture underneath it or our friend, Mr. Brioche. Okay, I got something there. That felt like either a very large chive or a scallion. It's just got that parm, like umami, very focused, sharp aroma and intense flavor. This is very rich. I definitely wanna explore fully whether we're talking about milk or cream or a combination here. In my mind, like that's the kind of thing that I would put like a little pinch of cayenne in, not so much to make it hot, but just to kind of wake up the flavor a little bit. But is there ever a scenario in which another lobster has been cooked so that you can fill this one double full of meat? I'm like really tripped up by these like onion, you know, like chives or whatever. What's gonna be in the claw? What's in the claw, man? We've got straight up lobster meat in there. I feel like I'm good here. I don't know. Am I like underthinking it, overthinking it? There's no real discernible acidity. I didn't feel a lemon or anything on the plate, which I kind of would have expected. And I couldn't really pick out any elements other than sauce, meat, garlic, breadcrumb. I want to say it's chive, but that's it. The only thing I can come up with is lobster thermidor. It's like beef wellington. It's like, oh, beef wellington. Yeah, of course. But like, who's had it? Who actually still serves it? <laughs> you know, aside from Gordon, love you, Gordon. There's nothing that seems very modern about it. It's definitely not Guy Fieri. It's probably not Manchi. No idea. Absolutely no idea. This one, I'm, I'm keeping silent. Bright light. The list for shopping. I wanna say that was like a two pounder. We have lobster, sauce, butter, flour, milk and or cream. And then I'm getting parm. I'm leaving to the side, the question of whether there is some amount of pepper, some amount of cayenne, some amount of paprika, anything in that world. I'm gonna call that for a chive. I wasn't really thinking about how the breadcrumbs were made. Are we toasting that in butter? Throwing a little garlic in there? What are we doing there? Let's call it garlic, butter question mark. We need some bread options. This is all I've got. This is a pretty alarmingly short list. Definitely making me wonder if I've missed something. If I have, it's not super obvious, at least to me. I'd say let's go shopping. I'm gonna get some scallions. I really think I had a chive, but 
safety. Chives, I'm just gonna get some garlic and then I think we're done in this section. I believe the garlic is in the breadcrumb and not in the sauce itself. Two-year-old Parm, they don't sell lobsters here. The rest of the team is sourcing a couple of lobsters for me. Never forget. Ben, what's that over there? I bought dairy. No, come on. You don't need to see this. You guys just like want to like make sure you get some like tight shots of me screwing up. And I don't appreciate it. I slipped some heavy cream in the basket. We've got milk at the kitchen, so that's no problem. Butter, all right? Anybody got a problem with that? Butter? I didn't taste anything other than parm. Is it possible there's something other than parm in there? Absolutely. I don't want to go fishing around in the cheese department looking for the right, you know, Swiss cheese, you know, Alpine something. The last thing that I'm really thinking about is the bread. The breadcrumbs were very soft. It's not super open. It's not super hard and crunchy. It tastes like it's got a little bit of richness in there, maybe a little butter, maybe egg. Whatever I do, it's probably gonna be a little bit wrong, but first and foremost, I need to make sure I get the flavor right. I'm gonna check out. We are back from the market, and first thing I'm gonna do is cook the lobster. So this is a bigger lobster. You know, you wanna make sure your lobster's alive. You do not want to cook and eat a lobster that has already died. I err on the side of just giving them like a very quick, very, um, you know, hopefully painless death before putting them into any um, water. So that's my, that's my hot take on that, and it's done. Usually I steam my lobsters, but we have a nice pot of boiling water ready to go here. I don't want it to be fully cooked, but you need to cook the meat inside in order to get it to release from the shell. After the seven minutes, I'm gonna put it in the ice bath for one minute, just to kind of cool it down. I wanna be able to pick this meat right away. All right, so we got one minute left. Color's nice and red. I'm just trying to think about like the quantity. I don't know, maybe there is a second lobster. Are you able to tell anything looking at it now? Like, what, that it's like a Pisces? Strategy is to cut it in half without completely maiming it. The meat is opaque, it's firm, but it hasn't turned like rubbery or anything yet. This is gonna separate beautifully from the shell. Overall, I'm happy with how long we cooked it. I've never actually done this before. Now a good time to bring that up. So I just wanna kinda clean out these halves. I guess the question is like how much of like this stuff does one take out? And then here's the tail meat that will just pop right out. Nice, itty nice. What I had this morning was claw attached to knuckles, attached to lobster body. And then with our saucy lobster situation inside of there with the breadcrumb on top. And then I'm assuming it was baked for some amount of time. I'm just gonna cut this into sort of bite-sized pieces here. It's not a lot of meat. It's not like the, what I was tasting was packed with lobster. There was actually quite a bit of the sauce in there. Next thing we need to do Maybe even before the sauce is we need to talk breadcrumb. Breadcrumbs are infinitely variable. All that I was getting flavor-wise from them was perhaps butter, garlic, and salt. So I'm doing side by side, white bread, straight up, and then brioche. I'm probably way overthinking this. That feels wrong. Like all that like powdery brioche chaff, I find that extremely upsetting. So this is pulsing up the white bread. Again, like it's just kind of fracturing into nothingness. What if we just toast it? And then kind of blitz it up? I don't know. I'm gonna toast some of these things side by side in the oven, get them dried out. And then in the meantime, we'll work on our sauce. Don't worry about it. You getting nervous? Okay, so we're moving on to sauce. The plan is start with a roux, turn it into bechamel add some cheese, which makes it a Mornay. Do you guys know about blender parm? Blender parm is where if you have like a very powerful blender, like a Vitamix, rather than grating the cheese with a grater, you just cut pieces of parm, throw it in the blender, and you blend it until it becomes even kind of pebble-like consistency. A question was asked, why parm and why now? It's got so much flavor, it's got so much umami, it's got that really sharp, kind of nutty quality to it. I just don't know what other cheese would give that to me. My brain is telling me parm here. My heart is telling me parm. 
blender bar. Done. I'm gonna start with a couple tablespoons of butter for our roux. A roux is a mixture of fat, doesn't have to be butter, and flour. When you add liquid to your roux, the starch in the flour activates with the heat being applied and it thickens, that's all. I wanna melt all the butter before putting in our flour. So I'm gonna do three tablespoons of butter to two tablespoons of flour. I am 83% confident that this is the correct direction to take with that sauce. So this is a cup of milk. I'm gonna do a cup of cream. I can always add a little bit more starch at this stage if I feel like I need the sauce to be thicker. So like, as you can see, even though it looks pretty fluid in the pot there, it's gonna set up somewhat tight here. So let's throw a pinch of salt in there. In the back of my head, I'm still thinking about whether there's maybe just, I don't know, I just, I want it to be there. I don't know that I tasted it there. A little pinch of cayenne. Like, does it feel weird to me to be putting Parmesan on lobster? Like, absolutely. This doesn't really like feel awesome to me right now. I'm just gonna give it a little tasty taste here. All that fat from the cream, it like really takes quite a bit of other flavors to kind of get out in front of that. So I don't want to overwhelm it, but through all these years, you know, still like known to shove things in the oven and just totally forget about them. These are a little bit dark, but you know, there's sugar in this bread, so it's gonna get dark. What are you gonna do? I think I'm getting closer. I still feel like maybe I'm missing a little something. I would have loved for there to have been some obvious kind of like lemon or something in that, in the original dish. I just, I really wanna be aware of not projecting onto it my own culinary baggage, if you will. I'm gonna just try this. I like the color a little bit better. The breadcrumb is something I'm gonna be really paying attention to during the second tasting today. So I'm just gonna sift out some of this little crap. I mean, this is like a way that people do make breadcrumbs. So I'm just gonna heat some butter in that skillet just to crisp these breadcrumbs up. Also get a little bit of garlic in there. So the breadcrumbs that I felt like I could taste, you know, in my mind, like they're that size. I didn't taste pieces of garlic, but I tasted garlic. Hence, I'm just doing a, a whole clove smashed up that I can fish out later. So these are gonna see a little bit more heat in the oven, but I imagine most of the color we're ever gonna get on them is gonna be kind of right here. The texture feels a little firm. I don't know about these. I'm just gonna dry this out a little bit. This is another piece of little brioche bun. <sighs> Have I mentioned my favorite film is Top Gun? This is brioche. For this version, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it into some pieces. And then from that point, I can break it down further. Shall we just agree that at that point I'll move on? Things are gonna start to happen a lot faster from this point. We're just doing a good bit of butter. We're gonna toast these up, get them crispy, pinch salt, go with our garlic. We should start to see some color appear pretty soon. And then we're gonna basically drop some lobster into some friggin' sauce into a lobster carcass. Maybe I will use about half of this. Lobster is going into the sauce. Feels like it wants to be very coated. There was a lot of sauce in there, but I don't know. Now everything's like looking crazy to me. The technique is you put the lobster in the sauce in the shell. It's looking a little bit crazy right now. I'm wondering if the breadcrumb kind of goes on now or if the breadcrumb might kind of go on like after. I think it would probably go on now just given how like soft and everything it was. I don't really love either breadcrumb to be totally honest. I'm gonna get this in the oven. I suppose you could heat the lobster in the sauce scatter the breadcrumb over and the chive. But I don't know, there was just something about the interaction between the breadcrumb and the sauciness of the lobster that made me feel like they had kind of, everything had sort of been reheated together. I mean, the bigger breadcrumbs definitely hold up a little bit better. Overall, I mean, have I seen crazier things? Yeah, I'm uh, just getting this for the gram. Okay, anyway, I mean, it definitely looks incomplete to me some chive doesn't take care of it. You might have a big problem here. I'm going all in on chive for the minute because that's mainly what I perceived. Last time I almost went down a dark hole to Rampocalypse. I'm leaning towards this just because it stayed way firmer. Yeah, I'm done. 
this is it. This is the dish. This is my first pass at it. Looking at it, I still have that feeling of it just not feeling quite complete to my eyes. I've left unresolved the question of whether there was a little bloom of chili, paprika, something maybe happening in there. The lobster's cooked. It's actually not overcooked. At the time, it felt like I was putting a lot of sauce into our little friend here. I don't know, now it doesn't seem like a crazy amount of sauce at all. Good garlic in the breadcrumb. Possibly starting with the firmer bread, knowing that it's then gonna soften in the oven when this thing heats back up. That might actually be the way to go. I'm getting the butter, getting the garlic. The Parmesan in the lobster is like slightly upsetting, but it's kind of delicious too. I'm cool with the Pullman. I'm just gonna rethink, you know, the workflow on the bread there. Claws cooked. I'd say I'm 78% on ingredients. I feel like there's there's something lurking around somewhere that I that I don't have. I'm gonna bump myself down to 72% for uh, for technique because I feel like either somebody's steaming something or maybe they're not reheating the whole thing in the oven. Really hard to know. Appearance. Something still feels a little incomplete, but I'd say 75% just from the standpoint of, look, it's a lobster, two pounds, you know, split in half, filled with, you know, kind of Mornay, lobster meat, breadcrumb, chive. Taste, actually, I, I'm giving myself 85 here. I feel good about the Parmesan, feel pretty good about the breadcrumb. I feel good about the fact that it's a lobster and that's gotta count for something, right guys? Coming in. A little cool at 77%, but um, this first tasting always leaves a lot of doubt, a lot of uncertainty, and I'm definitely looking forward to tasting the original dish again right now. See you guys in a few. Oh God, I'm, I don't have any spoons. Wait, hold on, cut, action. I need spoons. Thank you. So I guess it is scallion after all. Thanks for the heads up, guys. Still not picking up any lemon. There's a little something going on in those breadcrumbs, though. Um, I'm gonna call it black pepper. I've got scallion, I've got breadcrumb. Okay, okay, parsley. I'm wondering if it was put into the breadcrumb or if it's an additional garnish in addition to the scallion. Wow, it's cheesy. I think this is cheesy in the same way that mine is. It's just maybe I need to go up in the parm definitely need to incorporate parsley somehow. The possibility of cayenne is really what I'm kind of picking up from the sauce. It's not hot, but there's a warmth. I don't know if like the garlic has just disappeared or if I made it up. The breadcrumbs that I did actually with the brioche maybe feel a little bit closer to being correct. Not as far off as, as maybe I thought. My brain went to maybe there's some kind of like alcohol in there. You wouldn't add white wine really to your roux unless you were adding like a big quantity, because otherwise the roux could kind of tighten up and get lumpy on you. So I don't know that it's that. Still feeling good about Parmesan. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but still feeling good about Parm. Some things to think about tonight, as always. I'll be putting this up for Carla uh, middle of the afternoon tomorrow, so clock is ticking on figuring out what some of this stuff is. Yeah, no. I was feeling pretty good yesterday about the even split between whole milk and cream. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep rolling with that. I could see adjusting the sauce at the very end, just a little dash of something like a cognac or Madeira came to mind, just something kind of nutty, not super bright. It could be white wine, but then the question is, when are you putting it in? So if you put it in on top of the roux, the roux's gonna thicken up right away and could get really clumpy on you. I'm gonna break down the sauce, um, do a few tests there. Just making my roux. Uh, yesterday I used half milk and half cream. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'd rather spend a little bit of time messing around with the, um, the alcohol. I split this into two with the objective being that I put two tablespoons into one pot of the white wine so that at the moment that the cream and the milk are coming up to a boil, the wine is in there so that it has the greatest possible chance of kind of burning off the alcohol. Doing that makes me feel very uncomfortable. So then this one, I'm gonna divide further into two 
after the cheese has been added. Try maybe a little bit of Madeira in one, a little bit of cognac in the other, just as a finishing element. So we're just doing a tiny little taste of cayenne in each. Sticking to the cheese, it felt right, it tasted right. I'm just seasoning this with salt here, bring the flavor up a little bit. It's incredible how boring and flat it tastes without the salt. That could be it right there. All right, so that's parm going into this sauce. I just wanna taste the sauce first without wine. And then I wanna see what makes sense in terms of an alcohol addition to this one. So this is the sauce that does not have wine in it or any alcohol of any kind yet. So I'm just pouring off a little bit into each of these. You know, this is going in raw and it's not really being cooked. In this bowl, we have our um, Mornay sauce with cognac. And in this bowl, we are soon to have our Mornay sauce. No white wine in either uh, with a little Madeira. Madeira is a, um, a very light fortified wine that is oxidized. So it has like a very uh, nutty quality. Um, I feel like it's like maybe closest to like a sherry. hasn't really added any acidity whatsoever. And that like nutty quality of the Madeira is adding this kind of almost like a florality to it. It's a, a little bit upsetting. This is our cognac version. We're just not gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. Just taste that one. 19th century France. That kind of boozy finish I don't really want it in any of my food. This does taste better and more balanced than any of the other alcohols, but I'm just gonna reveal, this is with white wine. Feel Big like the parm wine, parmesan? there yeah. is parm in there. And, and, but then there's more on top? I don't think so. I don't know, I was like. <laughs> I don't think so. New show idea, what fucking alcohol is this? Oh, just like on. people just like put a glass of something in front of you. You gotta oh. figure it out. I don't wanna don't worry, it's gonna be me and Delaney. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, you and Delaney. <laughs> All right, well, well thanks for coming over, ma'am. Right. I'm feeling like white wine is the answer, having just a touch of acidity and a touch of balancing effect on the sauce. When it comes to the bread, I'm gonna try some of this baguette. The bread that I was tasting yesterday seemed to have a somewhat high proportion of uh, crust. There are clearly some like very coarse, irregular pieces here. We're gonna blitz this up. Pieces are looking better. In the second tasting yesterday, I was not picking up a ton of garlic. This um, smells like a sourdough baguette. I was just gonna add like a little bit of, you know, tanginess and funkiness, but I don't really want in this. Let's go for texture and overall appearance and feel. Very pleasing sound. Yeah, in this, just like so pleasing, you know? The way like certain things sound and then like the pitch sort of starts to change as they get a little bit like crispier and get darker. I mean, I think this is it for me. I don't know how, like, I'm not clear. I'm not gonna sit here making breadcrumbs all day. Confidence, I'd say like I'm at 84 right now. Feeling good. I'm just gonna start my sauce in the meantime. There's some chicken and waffle family meal happening over there and I don't intend to miss it. Yesterday, I felt like I tasted black pepper for a second. There's a little something going on in those breadcrumbs, though. I'm gonna call it black pepper. It's not super French to put black pepper in a white creamy sauce. I just haven't decided what I wanna do yet, okay? A little known fact in the kitchen, the faster you go, the less chance you have, the less time you have, frankly, to make mistakes. I'm gonna put it into an ice bath just to stop the cooking. Into my roux, I'm going to be adding a cup of milk cup of heavy cream. We're gonna stick with a quarter cup of white wine. All that's gonna come up together. Wow, the sourdough's throwing me off. We're gonna have to remake that for the one that I do for Carla later. You see his shorts? As it's heating up, the alcohol starting to come out of that. It just feels a little bit wrong not to independently reduce the white wine. Get it down to a simmer, calm the heat down. I'm gonna let that go for a couple minutes. Let's deal with our lobster here. I think it's probably safe to take the rubber bands off at this point. So yeah, we're just a little bit under in here. Most of the tail is, is perfectly fine. We are just taking out the bits and bobs that we don't need here. I've now made a bigger cavity which is potentially gonna work against me, just given that I have not cooked extra lobster. This is like moderately cleaned up, 
I'm just trying to kind of hollow out the cavity, get rid of those gills. I am a bit worried that like having taken that out, I may get a little bit more lobster leakage. All right, let's get our sauce seasoned up. Pinch of cayenne, third of a cup of parm, season it up. Felt like I tasted black pepper yesterday. I'm gonna hedge my bets and do that. These are just bite-sized pieces of lobster. It's just not a lot of meat. It just looks a little skimpy. Now I'm wondering if I should not have taken, you know, the gills of the lobster out just for the sake of not opening up extra space. And I'm also just wondering whether I need to cook another slightly smaller lobster on the side. I am having some leakage over here, which is something that I feared, you know, messing around with the inside of the body. So we're doing our breadcrumb in at 375, just so those breadcrumbs are toasty. Lobster's hot. Okay, before you see this, just know that I feel like I already addressed the fact that we had some lobster leakage. It only got worse, okay? So it's not gonna look like your passport to Flavortown or anything. In trimming out the inside of the lobster half, a few too many things kind of separated out overall. Like looking at this one in particular, like that's not half bad. The parsley, that is what I sort of maybe was responding to in thinking that like maybe there was some like lemon zest. Yeah, it just threw me off a little bit. Now I'm just doing scallion rounds. The shell doesn't seem full enough, so I'm not gonna hollow it out next time. All right, so this is version two. Um, right here is what I'm going with. These breadcrumbs are definitely crispier than what I had at the end of the day yesterday. I think I'm feeling happy with the sauce. I think the white wine is working. Black pepper is kind of indiscernible. I was getting like a mouthful of that scallion. It just was like, God, it just felt so abrupt, you know? But it tastes good to me. It's cooked. I think I'm just gonna go back to um, a less hollowed out uh, lobster body, not use sourdough. I feel okay about my decision to put the black pepper just in the breadcrumb. I believe white wine was the right move here. I don't think I'm missing anything in the sauce. There can always be that like sneaky little pinch of this, dash of that, you know, but if you can't taste it, then what's the point, right? Okay, ingredients, 83%. Technique, a uh, 78 here. Appearance wise, uh, 85. That's like my spirit number. It's a solid B. You showed up, you got your job done. You didn't make a complete ass of yourself. Taste, 90. Total score averages out to an 84, which I'm still calling a B. I'm about to do the last version, the one that I need to serve to Carla. I gotta make this one count, so gonna get to it. I refuse to use that sourdough baguette, so I have to use our old, stale, sad baguette, which is quite old and quite sad. We're gonna make it work. And then it starts to get into this thing, right? Cause like, if I needed a baguette and they were willing to go out and buy me one as opposed to just having one, cause that's like what they're using in the back to make the original dish. What does that say? Are they just playing like a real f long game here? You know, like trying to not let me get any kind of insight into what's happening back there. Sure, we'll get you a baguette. I mean, we have to walk out, like go down the street, you know, 20 minutes each way uphill, you know, but sure, if that's what you want. You know what I'm saying? All right, I gotta stop fucking around. Okay, flavor-wise, this is gonna be better than the sourdough. I don't know, like the breadcrumb is always messing me up. It's messing me up right now. I felt like I like really exposed my soul about it a minute ago. Black pepper, only going on the breadcrumb, not going into the sauce. Next, I'm gonna do this sauce, or three tablespoons of butter. Got my dairy there. And then white wine, quarter cup. Still feels a little wrong. I'm not gonna wander off and go start doing something else, okay? Sauce, I feel like an 83. I'm requesting a second lobster to be able to bulk it up a little bit. So this is a pretty good sized lobster. Whoa, he's, he's mobile, that guy. A little weird. So I'm just gonna fit this guy in here. I was not like the biggest fan of lobster as a kid. So lobster one is the one that we're basically par cooking. It's a good thing this is lobster number two because his claw just came off. So I'm cutting this lobster in half. 
I am not going to be removing any of the gills and all that stuff. How is it so messy? Can you imagine like cooking like 2,000 of these like in a day? We are now breaking down lobster number two. You guys getting that? I don't know what happened to that claw, but it's like got some weird spongy situation happening. Cayenne pepper, that is Parmesan going in. Salt, nothing else is going in here. All right, here we go. Saucing, it's about half of our sauce. Here we go, Sola. Now it kind of looks like there's too much meat, but it's, 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 it's mo it looks moderately more to me. I mean, it doesn't look insane or anything. It's what you came here for, isn't it? Let's use some sauce to cover up the eyeball a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's all good. Now I'm feeling like the breadcrumb probably was like never even toasted. It was probably just like dumped on there, but cool. I feel good about that. 10 minutes. Oh, the suspense. No leakage, sauce stayed in place. Breadcrumbs are crispy, looking nice golden. I think these claws are certainly gonna be cooked, but I just wanted to make sure everything got hot for Carla. Diane know who did this, by the way. Diane. Aside from Manchi, like, have I ever even gotten close? Probably not, right? Oh, Guy Fieri. All right, maybe it's Jacques Pepin. That would be my Hail Mary. What did we say about the, um, the direction of the claws? You guys are getting in my head. Not too much scallion, a little shower of parsley. I present to you Jacques Pepin's Lobster Thermidor, or something like it, or something by somebody else, or maybe not even Lobster Thermidor. I'm gonna call this an 84. That's kind of where I felt I was last time. This one feels simple in a way that some of the other dishes didn't. I feel like I had to hedge some bets but overall, you know, I feel, I feel pretty good about it. I certainly don't hate it. I'm not having like a crisis about it. Whatever I got right or wrong, this is the dish I have to present to Carla. I think she's on her way down here. So we'll see how it goes. A lot of pain behind these eyes right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Moment of truth. Mm -hmm. We got two silver boobies here. And yes. underneath which we've got the dish. Do you have a guess on whose recipe it is? I named Jacques Pepin ha. and Lobster <laughs> Thermidor. <laughs> The second part is good. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Pretty good. All right. <laughs> Chris, okay. I want to present you with Snoop Dogg's no. Lobster Thermidor. Stop. Oh my God, they look pretty identical. Mine smells like weed though. It's a saltine or something, isn't it? Or it, a Ritz cracker. It's a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cracker. Oh. Yeah. That, that really throws me for a loop. Do you I, think you ever would have guessed Snoop? I don't think I ever would have guessed Snoop Dogg. Like even if you had days to just make lists and lists. Days, Carla. Yeah. <laughs> Weeks, months, and even years. I don't think I would have either. They look amazingly similar. Yeah. Like truly. All right, so I'm just gonna take a refresher on Snoop's. Yep. It's a funny thing. What does Thermidor even translate to? All right. Very cheesy. Very cheesy. Very cheesy. I'm gonna take a taste of yours. Yours is much sweeter. This one is much sharper, much more cheesy. Cheesy. Foreshadowing. What do we got going on over here? Nothing made. Tell me, tell me. Well, in the morning, there is a little garlic and shallot in the butter mm. before the flour goes in. Okay. First tasting yesterday, I got garlic, and that's why I put it in the breadcrumb. And then you've also got some black pepper in your crumb, in the and crumb. there's black pepper in this morning. I put cayenne in the Mornay because you often see a little bit of cayenne in, you know, bechamel kind of based sauce. And you were picking up and some And I was picking up this, like, that little tingly. bit of, like, that heat. Yeah. I was like, would a Frenchie put black pepper in a white sauce? Never. Never. Never, never in a thousand Literally years. never. But Snoop Dogg, not French. Does what he wants. You missed a whole cheese. Cheddar? No. Do you have a cold? Gruyere. Now you got it. It's equal parts parm and gruyere, which okay. is also shocking, but I think also accounts for some of the texture, the sharpness. There's also some dry mustard in the Mornay. Cracker crumbs, bread crumbs. Were you going a little nuts about the texture? I was a little bit, but this to me like red as baguette crust. Uh, That's now uh, like toasted and it tasted buttery. Okay. So I put butter. butter. So there is white wine in this, there right? There is white wine in it. <laughs> That's one lobster. Yeah. 
It just felt like a little bit kind of scant to me. So you used extra lobster meat. I did. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Really. It's wrong, but I like it. <laughs> uh, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. <laughs> it's not that bad. I don't know that that's true. <laughs> Ingredients. Got the lobster. You got the lobster. Nailed it. And that is a main ingredient. I feel like we need to wait these ingredients a little bit. So there's, Mustard. There's Low 15 lobster. ingredients. <laughs> there's 15 ingredients, right? Okay. You missed four of them completely. Ah. You missed the gruyere, you missed the garlic and the shallot, and you kind of misplaced the cayenne. Okay. But overall, most of it was there. I'm going to give an 80 on ingredients. Technique, I mean, with the exception of overstuffing the lobster and spending oh. way too much time on crumbs, <laughs> Snoop goes the step of rinsing out the lobster shell. I thought about it. At what point are you rinsing flavor away? Now you've introduced water to the right. shell. Right. For technique, okay. 95. Wow. I okay. really appreciated that extra lobster. Appearance wise, almost identical. The biggest thing I think is Crumb. the crouton. Yeah. Ugh, I just feel good right now with 80 again. Okay, wow. That was not the number I was expecting. Were you thinking that's... I was going to go lower? No, I was thinking higher, frankly. You're doing well. Okay. Um, taste. The taste of the Gruyere is so prominent mm. that the absence of it makes a big taste differential, even though it only represents one, let's say, 80 again. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm listening. So 80, 80, 95, 80. Save me. That gives us 84. 84 um, is like no longer a B minus. I can live with that. You know, this. I, <laughs> there's there's a few things that could have gone my way or not gone my way. Yeah. White wine definitely went my way. Yes. Parm, you know, the presence of a good amount of parm. It wasn't like there wasn't parm in it. Right. But like the Gruyere, uh, you know, tasting <laughs> certain cheeses blind just yeah. by themselves. I know. Is really hard. Yeah. I think you did a really great job. You know, it's funny. Crackers and cheese. Crackers and the cheese. The things you left man. out, you could have oh. made a cheese board out of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now knowing what you do now, do you have a higher opinion of Snoop or lower, or did it stay the same? Higher. 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 Because where you were a fan just, going he, in. Yeah, yeah. He just left this part out of the song. It's like you got your rolly on the lawn, <laughs> your porn on dot, you're eating lobster fucking thermidor that really would have helped me out. But that's fine. Next Maybe time. that's like in some like B-side stuff that I just haven't gotten into yet. Great job. All right, thanks. I don't know if I ever would have gotten Cracker. That and the the Gruyere, I'm kicking myself about. It's just tricky. But um, but overall, I mean, I'm not I'm not like hating myself for this. You know, guessing the dish, getting most of the ingredients right, getting the overall look and feel right. That's that's huge. Um, I feel like it's it's always going to be something. Always. From crook to cook, platinum recipes from the boss dog's kitchen. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That food stylist used more than one lobster in there. Come on. So we had ordered some regular room service, but then the chef was telling me about something I should try, lobster thermidor. And I'm like, all right, bring it on up. I'm telling you, nephew, that is good. <laughs> nephew, is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> 